we just wanted to give you a little more backup uh, with the financing because in the past the uh, bank in the was not was not in this particular part of the business and here in the last year or so they started also with the municipal lease stuff we used UBT they've been very good to us and continue to be good it's just uh, from an interest rate that's kind of a difference between us that are paying the same dates and same amounts et cetera and so forth so you can get quotes for that as well and also to give you kind of a breakdown of the of the dealer because the way that bid works is they bid a base model and then the options the dealer so the base model may be closed but then you have to we need these eight options or whatever it is and that's typically what distinguishes between the, the various dealers that are out there there was also bids and we didn't you know there was a bid from a dealer in st louis and there's dealers in, in missouri and said we, we have always focused on keeping it Kansas. So we look to the Kansas dealers and whether there be something that could just be way out of form, but all generally three or four Kansas dealers in the mix. We're going to make a motion. We adopt resolution 2017-16 to purchase two police SUV interceptors and one police sedan. Uh, for Sean Mason Ford, the amount of 34,431, the financing will be done through the Bank of the West. process where they know or so I mean can Victory Four come back and say they can match that? I mean I like to see our money stay in one account. Right. Well they go through a sealed bid process so the so it's actually through the Mid America Regional Purchasing Council. It's a cooperative of purchasing agents. And so each each year whoever the president of that organization puts the bids out. Uh, this year Johnson County was the lead agency and so they put those bids out there uh, and then they they're a sealed bid and those bids are generally due this time of year by, by before the end of November but what a lot of them do is they will bridge it from one year to the next so we get 2017 pricing because the 2018 bids have to come in but it is a competitive sealed bid process and we take that base on these particular ones, they don't opt, they don't do options on vehicles. They look under each department, city, may need different things. So they basically say, here's the Ford Police Interceptor, and it's at X dollars. And then you effectively go to those dealers that have bid the projects and say, here's the additional options we need for this vehicle. So we start from the base that's competitive bid, and then the dealers provide a pricing on their options. Sometimes they don't bid all, you know, they may or may not bid all the vehicles. It, it varies by vehicles. Is the amount on the motion correct? The purchase of the vehicles, yes, and then the financing brings it to the total of uh, uh, five, 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 yes. So that's correct? That is correct. I'll yes. second the motion. Let me get that, that correct. 105,851 is the total amount? Yes, sir. Okay. Total amount being defined, yes. That is both okay. vehicles and the equipment that goes into the vehicles. There's been a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2017, no, I'm sorry, 2017-16 with the purchase of uh, police vehicles uh, and the total amount of 105,851. Does the clerk please call Driver? Yes. Spike? Yes. Adams? Yes. 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 Next item will be adopted consent resolution 2017-17 authorizing the city manager to enter into a lease purchase agreement with Bank Midwest financing public works department vehicles. And uh, typically Tammy would be here. She had uh, some, I think, out of town family matters and she may be back or traveling back at this time, so I told her I would address this one. Uh, actually, this vehicle was initially budgeted in the 2017 budget. Uh, 
it is effectively a replacement for our existing uh, 350 pickup, which is the standard truck that we used for plowing and other things for a number of years. Uh, the intention, obviously, is this truck will also be outfitted for that type of work. Uh, and did quite a bit of research on models and types, etc. Uh, but because it probably won't get in until the 2018 year, it may or may not get here in time for snow season. Uh, we haven't put into any of this anything to do with the plow or the <coughs> salt spreader that will need to be replaced. So we're just doing the truck and the bed assembly. So again, uh, we go off the metro bid. You see we had three dealers. As you notice, they're always pretty close. Uh, so we went to the three dealers, got the options uh, that would be necessary. It's similar to the truck we have, the four page truck we have, has a different bed and I like state bed or a flat bed on it, so they're not bed. Um, but the total price that as you see there for with the bed is $54,789. Uh, again, the truck will come here. We will then take it down to American Equipment Company, which is who most everybody in this region uses for that type of equipment. Uh, and then the financing, again, will be through uh, Bank Midwest. Uh, we did do a longer rate on this because the useful life of the truck is longer. And also, we had budgeted. Uh, a lower amount in our, in our payment. So that's the other reason we didn't want to put the equipment on there, i.e. the plow or the uh, spreader. We didn't want to find, didn't think that was appropriate to finance that, especially over five years. The truck itself, over five years, is exactly what we did on the other truck. Uh, amount and life, the useful life of those trucks are a lot longer than the useful life of those trucks. So our recommendation is to Authorize the purchase to Shawnee Mission Ford uh, and uh, financing <coughs> through Bank Midwest in that total amount of uh, $54,789. Who do we anticipate? Uh, generally, uh, trucks seem to take a little longer, uh, so we're probably looking at a February time frame. This is in next year's budget? Yes. It was budgeted both in both years. So we are taking some of the money in the current year. Well, it saves us some money in the current year. Uh, we did not specifically budget for the plow and the spreader into next year, but we'll you know, figure out how best to handle that. <coughs> we don't really want to buy it. We've talked about it, but I don't want to buy a plow and a spreader and have it set up at the shop for the year not to be the existing spreader works. We're having problems. The old one. We bought a new one. The secondary we had was had problems. You know, they break. They have problems. It's gas power. These are the newer ones running off electric power. And they don't have the same kind of chains and gears that the old ones have. They get clogged with the salt sand, etc. So that that is our plan. What are we doing with the old truck? We will probably, on the Chevy, we will probably go ahead and keep that kind of as a reserve truck, use it. We do use it for parks and things of that nature, uh, you know, just for running around. We still will use it for, like, drive, uh, for the parking lot, plowing and things like that. But if it becomes too expensive, we will sell it. It, it has very little value left to it. I don't remember what year it is. I think it's a um, or five. It's kind of like the old Ford truck we had. Uh, we tried to sell it out. I think we got a bid of like 400 bucks or something like that for the plow. So we decided to keep it until one day it will die, and it dies, it dies. And I mean, literally, I mean, it, it's it's probably not worth selling, and it's certainly not worth investing any money into it. Uh, the Chevy still has some life, but not much. Is that the truck that was hauling the trailer this weekend? The... Mm, no. Yeah, that. The, you're thinking maybe the new, the one that carried this, the uh, barbecue. Mm -hmm. for, now that's our, that's the newer truck. So, probably works for pretty well. So. How many trucks do you have in the public right now? Uh, the three that we have that are accessible to use. 
So we have the well, for the code enforcement officer, that's also public works. So that's the one that's got the camper show on. It's also doubles up for animal control, the public works director truck. And then we have the 450 with the dump bed and the old Chevy truck. Is this truck the new one that we're buying a diesel? Yes. Yes. As is, it's it's pretty much the same truck as we had. We looked at the 350. Actually, she did some research, talked to some of the mechanics at some of the other city shops about some of the, the what these work out. What what they're finding out is the 350s when in plowing, and you know we're doing more and more of that. That the 350s are having problems with the and an that size truck transmission problems because you're trying to put you know, especially if you have heavy snows that they're just they're fine for parking lots they're fine for light duty snow removal but when you get on streets and roads it's over taxing the three I think the last time we, we purchased one Mr. Frazee really steered us away from the three fifty didn't you? Thank you very much. Correct. Again, public works, as you know, has been an area that has been, you know, we haven't really put the equipment in there and, you know, we've kind of gone and done and went by. And, and so this is kind of part of that plan to, uh, for some respects, modernize the fleet here. So the, the next vehicle we anticipate we will be purchasing will probably be a light duty truck as part of the uh, sewer. It's within the sewer fund. We budgeted to the sewer fund to do a light duty work truck there. We have to spec that out, and we're good for now. Motion to approve resolution 2017 SF. Second. And moved and second to adopt resolution 2017 17 with the amount of 54,789. The clerk, please call roll. Yes. Second. Yes. Adam? Yes. 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 The next item is the consider authorizing city manager into an agreement with Zoho Medical for the purchase of the auto pulse chest compression device. Mayor, council members, before you invite is a purchase for an automated uh, chest compression device. This was an item that was identified in the 18 budget for a grant. And we have an opportunity to purchase one now to save us about $4,000. Thanks to two in-kind donations, one from an unnamed source and the other from Def and Ball, that would cover the purchase price of this device. Um, unfortunately, with the uh, realm of CPR nowadays, uh, this device is awful barbaric when you're looking at it on a patient. However, it provides the best CPR there ever is and be had. It does not have rescue or fatigue. It does not interrupt because you're going up and downstairs. It does not interrupt when you're transferring from an ambulance. You're not having to ride the rails. It provides two inch depth compressions and 120 compressions a minute and does not stop until we switch it off. Um, with this device, we anticipate that we have a higher save rate, potentially due to the CPR when we arrive on the scene to allow for our ALS measures. The reason why we brought it in front of you is because of the two in kind donations, and currently they've knocked the price down from $14,003 to the special $10,900 result. We are going to take the money out of the special sales, or propose taking the money out of the special sales tax fund and reimbursing once in once we have the two donations that have been confirmed to be in by the end of the month to offset the purchase. It'll take about 30 days from the time of purchasing the order until we have delivery. We'll have three days of training on the device. Then it'll be on our main run pumper or our first run ambulance to sit there and start CPR processes. Like I said, it'll reduce the risk that we have in the back of an ambulance trying to do CPR while you're transporting to the hospital, which we have tried to avoid doing. However, we do have Cases where you have a return of the pulse and then you sit there and start the transport process and the patient comes again. This will also allow, like I said, uninterrupted continuous CPR at the appropriate rates that we will sit there and be able to reduce that risk of trying to stop CPR while we're going downstairs and with the new standards uh, we're looking forward to this device. So in front of you is to authorize the city manager to authorize the purchase for $10,900 um, for the chest pressure device which you see there. Two of the batteries in the case to it. Make a motion to authorize the manager uh, to purchase with Zoll Medical uh, ACCD uh, to receive the amount of ten thousand dollars. Second. It has been moved and seconded to authorize the city manager to enter into an agreement with Zoll Medical for the purchase of ACCD for the amount of ten thousand nine hundred dollars. 
Would the clerk please call the Driver? Yes. Dice? Yes. Adams? Yes. Jones? Yes. Malott? Yes. Mike, you're on. Well, I just might uh, just follow up to that, uh, say a thank you to uh, Deffenball and to the other mm -hmm. company. They just, they just at this point have to, you know, they're all, they're all business in our area, but they just don't want the publicity, so that, that's that's fine. Uh, but we will, Devil will be here our next meeting to present the check, their check in the amount of 10000 That was uh, a surprise, uh, I mean, it's a pleasant surprise mm -hmm. when you get called and they said, by the way, we had, I think, a, a corporate golf tournament and we decided to dedicate $10,000 to the Evansville Fire Department. Effectively, that will cover the cost of this. But, uh, Anyways, they could be here and we can thank them properly at a, at a future time. Um, the few things that I have, I mean, number one is our next meeting, remember, will be the 30th. Uh, myself and uh, Zach will be in San Antonio for the, the International City County Management Association. It's 100 and something conference, uh, 100 second, okay, uh, conference. Uh, Unlike Zach, I'm coming back to work. Uh, <laughs> he, he is smarter and decided to stay for the week and to spend time with his family. So uh, uh, we'll see when he gets back. Uh, the other thing I'd just like to thank again is on the fall family picnic. I think, you know, I don't know, we had probably several hundred people come there. Uh, you know, we had you know, members of the council, from the planning commission, from the parks. Uh, staff, I mean, we had lots of people that were willing to put some time in. Uh, you know, I think we probably have to give Michelle the, the, the kudos of the day. I, I didn't know you could get that much uh, sugar stuff on top of you. And then they, the guy that came the train said, you know, they make a shield for that thing and some things so it doesn't all blow all over. <laughs> Could have said that a little earlier. You probably have money in truck. Either that or they, who you leased it from should have. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll probably know <laughs> next year. Yeah. But I will say that that, uh, that Jessica and Zach really uh, uh, you know, <laughs> led it. But I mean, Jessica did it. And, and, you know, she really was kind of our, our person taking the lead on that. And, making sure we had meetings and kept us up to date and got all the stuff ordered and organized those things. But uh, between the two of them, and quite honestly all of our staff, uh, we make those things happen. We think they're important for the community. Uh, we are going, you know, like we talked before, we may look at, uh, we've been fortunate with October, but we're going to maybe look at, do we do something to move both the our, our normal festival and this festival maybe try to do some combination of these two festivals, maybe at a different time of the year, uh, you know, maybe September or something, I don't know. It seems like no matter when we put something together, <coughs> fall, spring, probably if we had it July 4th. We this guy planned in the middle of a drought. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but we're, we'll be doing some follow-up, uh, and we'll be, I think we're meeting this week you know, to talk about. Yeah, the weather cooperated just on that yeah, for sure. Yeah, we had great weather, no, no problem there. Other than that, I will address any questions that you all may have. Oh, let me do say that, that we have been working on the facility study. I think I gave you all a few months ago. We've been doing interviews of firms, and we have the last two this week. Uh, and Mr. Roth was gracious enough to sit with myself and uh, Mr. Knopic on those. So, we're making progress there. I think we've had some good presentations. We've had some, like when you do these things, you're going, well, there's one we don't have to worry about moving forward. But, uh, they're a good firm, it's just, you know, they may not be the right firm for us. So, I my answer questions if there are any. Mr. Chief Matisse? Uh, nothing, thank you. Chief Winter? Yes, a few things. Um, we're going to go Fire Prevention Week this week. Traditionally, we go to the school tomorrow. It was scheduled, except for rain and the 40 degree weather at about 5 30 this afternoon the principal and myself decided we're going to push it back for another week um, we'll be involved with that however we have been out um, advertising again fire safety messages we've got a few other trips planned for this week over here including some of our commercial industries down in the industrial park we have that open firefighter antique position that closes tonight 
We're hoping to have the interview wrapped up with that and that individual on board by the 5th of November. Um, is the plan. Uh, Mr. Burr, the EMS chief, um, unfortunately not here tonight, will not be here the rest of this week due to a family matter in Florida. When he returns, he will be going out to Las Vegas next weekend for the EMS World Conference, which we always send him to every year. So he will be absent for the next two weeks. I'm having some contact with myself and Mr. Webb. If there's anything that you need to have questions on, please feel free to call me on that. Contact me on that aspect. Before the next council meeting is the Cram the Cruiser, Cram the Fire Truck Golf Scramble on the 27th of October. We are looking at, we have a, a roster of about 60 golfers right now. who are committed to golfing that Friday afternoon. Um, so hopefully by the next council meeting, I'll have the update of what we've grossed off of that uh, venture as well. Uh, Mr. Adams, Mr. Gilman, I'll be emailing you for your time services on we'll that day as well um, with that. And then the last thing I have, uh, myself and Ms. Snyder from Public Works had to devise a plan to start dealing with some of the vegetation issues we have at Riverfront Park, the city park, on the Long Hill Drive and the cemetery. So the fire department's going to sit there and do a lot of vegetation management over the winter months this year, clean out a lot of our trouble areas that we have in the attempt and hope that next year uh, it makes it easier for lawnmowers and leaders to get there. And kind of clean up some of that around the Phyllis uh, Freeman Trail in the park. Like I said, the Riverfront Park, um, traditionally along in front of the United Methodist Church on Edwardsville Drive is a problem. Plus the culverts north and south of Williamson Farms. Um, we've got a lot of smaller saplings, two, three inch trees that are starting to go up in there. We're going to try to clear out, and then, like I said, along with the cemetery. Thank you, Chief. The city attorney is not available. Public works is not available. So, uh, Garrett. Uh, somebody had to recruit Deppenbaugh to get that money, and I suspect that person was in the audience and can't be either. That's much appreciated. That's a surprise to me that Deppenbaugh would come up with something like that. That's really acceptable when that happened. Thank you for all the work that you all did from City Hall on that, on that picnic on Saturday. It was pretty fun. The facilities committee is very interesting. It's something that I've never done before. I'm learning a lot with it, and I'm also learning that Dave Nopkick and, and Michael Weber are pretty close to irreplaceable on some, of the, on some of the things that they do around here, so that's really appreciated and all that, so that's what I've got. Thank you. Mark? I'm going to step around tonight. I'm going to step around tonight. I the code violation, so... That's all scheduled for the court date. It is scheduled for court date, um, so that is in, in process. Uh, the, the prosecutor's aware of the problems, sure. okay. and, and I think we all got that. And so it, it, it's a, you know, I, I understand it's a frustrating process. Mm -hmm. it, it is, uh, but it, it hasn't fallen off the radar at all. So it is a, a, definitely a focus of. Whether rightfully or wrongfully, months ago or so, we got a complaint. The, the code enforcement officer notified the person. Uh, there was some corrective action. Basically, closed the case. And, you know, he took corrective action, then it kind of did, you, didn't stay. Can I ask so, you? They notified the person. Is that the land, the homeowner, or the tenant? I, don't I, know I was for confused sure. on that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I think it's the tenant. It, so, so like any of these, just like the house we had up on Southern Street, we're legally required to notify the owner of record, whatever that is in the tax rolls. But, and I, 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 I say that the typical is, obviously, the person that's committing the act is the <coughs> tenant. I mean, it could be the property owner, it could be a tenant, it could be, you know, my son or daughter lives in the house. So whoever has control of the property can be cited on that as well. Typically, the citation or the, the focus is on whoever is the occupant of the house and not necessarily the property owner, but we do have to notify the property owner. It's just frustrating. It, it is. They've had notice and had notice and things get worse. That's yeah. kind of going back. Clean it up so. and it's better. Cleans it up and it's better. And, you know, and, and I will say this, that sometimes on these kind of cases, there are some things that are on the edge of whether they're a clear, defined 
violation of the code, and they may be very tacky, but they may not be a code violation. Uh, you and I, everybody probably here and say, wait a second, that's not the way we would do it. But, but are they a, technically, are they a code violation? Sometimes, it, it, you know, you want to say it's nice and clean, but it's not always. I mean, you know, people hang things up on the fence or something. You know, if they hang it up dry, bring it back down the next day, it may not be a violation of the code. It may be tacky. It's not something. But so it, it is a challenge. But I, I can say that the prosecutor is very aware of it. I can say that on other, I mean, we've had several cases go before the court, and the judge is. Uh, Generally done, a, I think, a good job of saying, "Here, I'm going to max your fine. I'm going to give you a very short period of time to correct this. I kind of put you on probation, and if you do that, I'm not going to charge you all your fine. But if you don't do it, I'm charging you all your fine, and you come back here the second time. I mean, there's no kind of no forgiveness. So he's, I think he's done overall on code enforcement." We don't get a lot of them in the court. Most of the time, they get corrected. But in other instances yeah. like that, if they were to have a different violation after that case was closed, then all of the other fines would be reintroduced and right. be responsible for those. Well, as a way to help to help maintain that level of compliance. That's the way the judge is set. So they're almost on a, on probation. So so they may clean it up and direct you know. So here's a problem. I cleaned it up. I've been, you know, I, I was found guilty with the fine. The fine amount may be, you know, he probates a portion of the fine, but you're on probation for a year. You violate the terms of your probation, just like any other probation. You violate the terms of probation, well, your, your, your plea of not guilty now becomes a plea of guilty, and all the fines and all the charges and all the whatever applies uh, immediately to that. So, well, I, I certainly hope that we yeah. have a good outcome. Yes. Um, and just a comment, too. Uh, just, I think it was mentioned earlier. I do know the city needs to purchase many things, you know, vehicles, equipment. And I yeah. sure would like to see one. And if we can get some money in that county, that would be nice yeah. to generate it here, if we can. We try. And, and again, I, know. I mean. I know. I understand. And, and you know. And, not, big not big report is one. I mean, what you know? I mean, was one that in the past, basically when the Bonner Springs for and I know they moved up there, and they're, you know, they they weren't in the bidding process. I'm not. I think this may be the first cycle that they actually formally bid. It, uh, it is. I mean, it's so it's and and you know, the next bids come out here, and the next I, again, I know they're due. I I want to say 15 through, through 16, somewhere in this next week or two. My guess is that they're they're submitting. I mean, they're fully aware of it, so uh, I, we would agree, and we try to look for opportunities to do that. And get, you know, get those, those kind of kind of like the banks, right? I mean, sure. There's a there's a hundred financing firms out there. There might even be somebody cheaper. You know, not that we found, but you know, Bank Midwest is our bank depository. UBT has done a lot of work for us. You know, they've been very you know very good to us for financing sure. things. So we do look for opportunities. We're not always able to capture all of them. And another event coming up before our next meeting is the annual trunk or treat. Yes. Sunday, October 29th, I believe. Mm -hmm. We'll send out details to everybody. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. always a fun event. It is. It is. And last but not least, thank you, Zach, and all the staff. The, the picnic on Saturday was, it was Mother Nature almost got us, but we, we made it happen. That no, was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Thank you for all your efforts. I know all that goes on behind the scenes. A lot of work. Thank you. That's it. Um, speaking of codes and for enforcement, yes. do we have any progress on Yes, we have made a selection. Uh, actually, Carly Brinkman, Brinkman has, been, has accepted the position. She actually worked with the city uh, uh, as a part-time in the parks department. She's been with the city. She wants to stay with the city. She recently finished her degree at uh, St. Mary's. Uh, we think she'll be she'll be a good hire. She will take some some work. Uh, she does you know she's young. She doesn't have strong code enforcement background. 
but quite honestly, the two people that we had that both had good strong code enforcement background uh, either didn't pass through the process uh, or the other one uh, chose to stay in their current employer. So, so we feel it's something we need to get that. You know, not just anybody, but I mean, I mean, she knows our city. She has a vested interest in the city. Quite honestly, we still use that position, and you know, especially the summer months to help help out sometimes on the grass and or code. You know, I mean, if we have a code violation and the yard needs to be mowed, she can get it done. And she, I'll say this: she's not afraid of work. I've never seen anybody that she'll work. She'll, quite honestly, I think she. Outwork anybody we have in the city. <laughs> she is a work. Yes. <laughs> when did she start? Uh, right. I think uh, it's the next week. Uh, I think so. Yeah, we have the 23rd. Dawn this week, and then, yeah, the 20, 23rd. 23rd. Okay. So I, I think maybe some things like this disaster we've got, right. maybe uh, we'd be able to nip that in the bud before it becomes a not, not change. It, 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 will, it helps when you have somebody that can dedicate most of their time to something. I mean, Tammy's done a great job, and you know, and we, we probably had more cases that Tammy herself is handling as public works director. But you know, we got a development going on. We got the road project being done. We've got repairs. We're trying to do vegetation maintenance, and we can't really expect our public works director to be driving them in. Run COVID for you, probably to the level that you would like to do. So she's done a good job. You know, and I know she'll be very happy to have somebody she can dedicate to that. Excellent. Sure. The, uh, the codes issue, and I know we're all hitting on it. Right. But the emails and photos that I received from uh, Jeff Carson, this guy's playing games with us, is what he's doing. He's playing the system very well. And he, and he knows how to do it. So I don't know if we're able to, um, when we go in front of the prosecutor, right. show that he is a, that what he's doing is cleaning up the day before or two days prior, and so he's passing it, and then being in violation 99% of the other time. Right. And I think it's going to be very important that we make sure that the prosecutor and the judge that we are looking. I, I think, in my opinion, that we are looking for. Um, maximum fine on somebody that is right. you now somebody that, that they fall in this group and, and they take care of it and they uh, it goes away that's not the person I'm talking about this right. guy this house right. is clearly playing games right. and it's it's a, it's it's a shame that people uh, are uh, having to live around that it's terrible so and I truly believe the prosecutor and the judge are, I mean, less so for the judge, I mean, you know, the judge's role is different, but the prosecutor has all those documents, the photos. We've also been taking the photos. Uh, you know, yes, we'll take photos on, on days of courts and things like that, but to demonstrate that this is not a one-time event, that this is an ongoing violation. So I, I, I believe we have the documentation to show that. Well, what's interesting right now is the month of October, anyway, is it kind of looks exactly like what Halloween and a scary house and a haunted house should look like because that's what he's got it decorated like. He didn't have to do much to create a house that looks like it ought to be a haunted house. So, anyway. Um, the, what you're talking about, the bid process with Victory Ford, they were not, uh, they didn't bid before, and when they uh, moved from Bonner Springs to Kansas City, I approached them and asked them, uh, and they, they were really not familiar with the process. I reached out to Mike and to Zach both, and we talked about how they get them familiar, um, and I, I think this is their very first bid that they got, and hopefully they see these numbers. I'm sure they will. Yeah. And they can sharpen their pencils and they can try to keep that money here. And I think the key areas for, for the vehicle bids in general is is the options because that's where quite honestly the dealers I mean if you go to the base bids, I mean you can have one that has a base bid eight dollars cheaper than the other one. But you know, and there's some dealers that do this more than others, you know, but then they just they jack the, the options up so much that if you just say oh, we're going to go with the lowest base bid, 
you actually end up paying thousands more for the vehicle because it's part of the options. And so that's why we we like to take those people that have bid, we've got the base bid, and send it out to them and say, here's the however many options that we need, price the option. Because then you're getting a true bid of what that is. Because they do have control over their option. You know, they, they can they can set the option price to whatever they choose to. They can, some of them just go right down the retail list, and that they say there's the retail list, and we'll take five percent off. Others understand that options can really change the price, just like when you and I buy vehicles. But we did. I do remember trying to help them get connected to the right people. No, and we want it for you. Want you know, absolutely. No. When is the delivery on the uh, tractor and mower? The the Mower when is, will it be able to be used? <laughs> yeah, uh, the mower's here. The tractor, which I would have thought would have been the easy part of it, there for some reason between HGAC and Kubota, they had different numbers, and we had submitted all the stuff, and our number's right, so there's no change in it. But between Kubota and HGAC, the, the, they had a different number for whatever reason. And we kept waiting on HGAC to come, because they actually had to confirm the order. And we finally ratcheted it up and said, we need the tractor. So hopefully within the next 30 days. It's ready to, as soon as the tractor gets approved, and I don't know, I don't know how long, if it's a tractor in stock at Coleman and they just take one out of stock and they <coughs> bring another one later, or if they ship it from, I'm not sure where Kubota ships their tractors corporately, they're out of, out of Great by Texas. But, uh, you know how how they do that. As soon as it's there, it's ready to be installed. And they ready. And then we got to train them a little bit, but uh, that may be some of our winter month work as well. So that is a big piece of equipment with stuff that's moving around that's dangerous, so we want to make sure we have people know what's going on. So, long answer. I I would I would hope it already be done. I'd hope we should be operational within 30 days, assuming. It, it won't take long to assemble the mold portion. It takes a little bit. Thanks. Jason? I think the uh, Sweet Park uh, event for Family Picnic was a big hit. I also uh, saw a lot of the excitement over the uh, disc golf. Uh, it's a good, good idea to bring uh, bring those out there for families to kind of get a trial run of that. I know we're, we're excitedly waiting the uh, installation of the uh, foot golf and disc golf, uh, hopefully in the next 30, 45 days. And first, first of the nation. Sure. First of the nation, first combination. <laughs> All right, we're going to go with that. get the equipment in before the end. I don't know whether we're putting disc golf in the nation. Yeah. 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 I, I kind of like having the events as two separate events. Mm -hmm. I, I like the fact that we have no. we have the uh, trunk or treat coming up, and it's just yeah. We're getting a lot of nice, repetitive events that our city is becoming known for, mm -hmm. and people are coming to anticipate and, and uh, get excited about. And I just want to say kudos for all the staff for, for working on those types of events. Um, our, our sports programs are growing. Uh, I think we need to continue to look for those kind of activities. I, I think, uh, Chief, the work that you're doing with the golf tournament coming up and the money that we're raising for families, we're doing a lot of really good things for families in Edwardsville. And uh, it's, it's the work of uh, the collective body. And uh, really proud of everything everybody's doing to, to help put those things together. Thank you. Um, not a lot to report, but I would like to recognize uh, Representative Tom Burroughs, who joined us tonight to sit in and watch our procedure. Tom, welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Council members, appreciate it. Anyway, uh, and my only comments are, again, like everybody else, it was really a super event. I really appreciate the staff's work. Really, uh, it was really a nice event. A lot of people were there. A lot of kids were there, which is important. And like Jason said, you know, those kind of events for kids to bring, families to bring their kids to is really a, an important thing. So having said that, we are adjourned.